<laughs> Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to our collective space. Today is the first day of the five day period of the Pisces Solar Festival and special time, special energy and special opportunity for us all to be together and celebrate the presence of love. Welcome to the Pisces Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. And as always, we will start with alignment. And I invite Sharon to lead us in this alignment. Good afternoon, good morning, good day. So let's allow a few breaths to happen as we bring ourselves to this place. Feeling our body where it is. bringing our awareness through to the heart, to the top of the head, to the group center, to the heart of the group, that deep, expansive, ever-expanding heart. You can breathe love into that space as it expands out to others in our awareness, in the larger group. And we expand outwards and upwards. It's hierarchy. Shambhala. And we find our place in that alignment. And in that breathing, in, receiving, and breathing out, that flow continues as we invite Heidi to carry us forward. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, thank you, Sharon, for that. It's always just so good to <laughs> land together. Um, and also, thank you, Sasha, and all of you involved with the 2025 initiative for inviting me. I think this is the third or fourth time I've gotten to come and join you, and it's always very special for me. Um, I was just saying how I love this, this time of year when you can just start to anticipate spring. And I always feel like I, I start to come alive in spring. And <laughs> so I'm happy to sort of be talking to you at this moment when it starts to feel like little, little flowers bursting through the ice or something. Um, so I, I, I talk, I, I, today it's very important for me that we are working together. So I am going to be offering some astrological thoughts and I'm going to be offering some poetry, but I'm also going to invite you at certain moments to share with me through the chat. And I would love it if it's very much a conversation. Um, I know that one of the new themes for, for the 2025 initiative is to really feel like it's a meeting place and a gathering in the garden as you're moving forward. And so, and we're in the Aquarian, it's such an Aquarian time after all. So um, I, I really wanna hold this less as a talk and more as a conversation. Um, 
and, and hopefully you have maybe a pen and paper nearby, I might ask you to write a few things down. So I wanna share with you as we're getting underway, um, I called this uh, talk, this, this experience, um, we gather in the name of love. And I wanna share this image with you. Um, this is an image by Jan Richardson, who is a wonderful poet and uh, visual artist. And uh, I, I, I love this for many reasons. Um, she calls it a gathering of spirits. I love it as um, a little Aquarian group uh, at a solar fire festival. <laughs> and um, there's something that feels deeply quiet about it to me as well. And I thought that with this beautiful image up, we could also start with a blessing. Um, that she wrote. And, you know, David White calls, uh, he talks about blessing in this way. He says, to be blessed is to be healed out of your own imprisonment. To be blessed is to be healed out of your own imprisonment. I, I have a like a bodily reaction to that, right? And obviously we all need to heal ourselves out of our own imprisonment. But isn't it also a beautiful thing when we can receive a blessing and sometimes an unexpected blessing. And I think of blessing as almost love in the form of words. So, you know, as we listen to this, let it crack open that first layer of our own closure, right? We all, we all have our daily closures and we have our big imprisonments and we have to keep resetting ourselves and we have to keep softening again and again to let that flow of love that is ever present and is so palpably present in this group right now to, to stream through and pour through. And so her blessing is just a few lines and it goes like this that we who need each other will find one another, that we may follow the lines that will lead us to the kindred of our souls, that our tribe will grow and prosper and be a blessing, that we may be the beauty in which we long to dwell. Isn't that a beautiful last line? That we may be the beauty in which we long to dwell. And I, I love this idea for us that we who need each other will find one another. And I, you know, obviously it's like a group like this. We find one another and we, and we practice together and we go on a journey together. So we who need one another will find each other. But I also think of that just in humanity. Like, let's find one another. Let's find the best of one another. Let's see one another. Let's, let's, extend our identity into one another, right? So that we who need each other will find one another and that we will follow the lines that will lead us to the kindred of our souls and not only our own dialogue with our soul self, but the kindred of our souls. Any, any new group of world servers group, any group that comes together to raise consciousness is, is finding the kindred of the souls, yeah? And that this is a time, if ever there was a time, you know, here we are with Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius. Here we are with this moment in time when these groups that are dedicated to growing consciousness and light will grow and prosper and be tested and be tested <laughs> and be a blessing, yeah? And always that last line that we may be the beauty in which we long to dwell, that we may be the beauty. So we, it's not something that's outside of ourselves. And I think that's also something that we have to think of when we start to think of Pisces and we start to think of love. It is certainly not outside of ourselves. It is forever ceaselessly moving through and woven into the fabric of who we all are. So, um, so here we are entering this beautiful Pisces moon time and uh, this solar fire festival of Pisces. And... David White also says this, he says, you have to say no to surface invitations so you can say yes to the great invitation. And I think that we've all learned something during this last year. There haven't been many surface invitations, right? We 
they've been sort of like, uh, you know, party, up, can we have a gathering please? But, but, but you, you get the point that Pisces invites us into this greater and greater stillness and greater and greater solitude and silence so that we can have the greatest invitation, which is to connect with the, you know, the greatest energy available, yeah, and let it pour through us. When I think of Pisces, um, years ago, I wrote down a few words around Pisces and I just said, and, and, and this is by way of just inviting Pisces into the space. Um, I said, apprentice to the ocean, surrender to the divine, give all, open repeatedly with compassion, find your sanctuary, let it replenish you. Finally, end self-destruction. Be wordless, let silence sing, save and redeem. So those are just a few Pisces words. And I wonder if I could invite you as we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna bring up the full moon chart in just a moment, but I wonder if I could invite you to enter into the chat any first words or images or you know, they don't have to be brilliant, but any thoughts around Pisces, this Pisces full moon time, what comes to you? Be love and share with all, beautiful, exactly, yeah. Because go ahead and put your voice into this because our voices create the, acknowledge the love. Deep silence is speaking to me right now, yes, yes. That's the great invitation into the deep silence. Serve love, beautiful. Yes. You can actually feel these land, right? Whenever I'm speaking about Pisces, I almost just want to stop speaking, right? Magic of the infinite. That's beautiful. There's something about the spaciousness of Pisces. An image that I always have with Pisces is standing at the water's edge with my arms extended, standing at the ocean, the perspective given. Lynn, let the cords of love come alive. Beautiful, why? Pisces rules music, Pisces rules poetry, right? Pisces rules the, the music of the spheres. Let the cords of love come alive. Yeah, the silence between the notes, yes. <laughs> yes, and there's something about the song of silence, the silence that contains all sounds that is very Piscean. Um, it's, it, you know, even these moments when I stop speaking, it's this, it's the fabric that you, it's the, it's the feeling of the group, the, the connection of the group. It's the love that is the, the, the glue between us, not a Brahma. Yes. Beautiful. The world server, the world savior. Yes. And we are such in a time of the combination of the two, right? We're such an Aquarian time, which is the world server. And we are celebrating the world savior. We are celebrating the, the Christ consciousness. So beautiful. Okay, keep keep as they as it comes to you. Uh, keep keep entering. It's it. Let's keep sharing. Um, there's no right time. Just go ahead and keep entering your thoughts around Pisces. I just want to share this with you for a moment because I think um, to continue to set us in the the scene of this beautiful auspicious month of love. This is the um, chart of the full moon. And I just wanna point out a couple of things. Um, number one, we have this gorgeous uh, Venus now in Pisces and Venus is exalted in Pisces and it's going to be making its way up to a conjunction with the sun. And by March 13th, it will be in harmony with, it will be conjunct Neptune as well. So um, there, talk about a beautiful lineup, talk about, uh, a beautiful beckoning and welcoming of the redemptive quality of love, a lineup of Venus, Sun, Neptune, and also talk about it in the next couple of weeks as an incredible time for you that 
that work with any form of artistry to allow this inspiration in, this downpouring of inspiration um, when we look at Venus as a planet of creativity. Um, so this lineup is very, very beautiful. Also, I wanna point out that um, Neptune, which is a deeply important planet for Pisces, Neptune is square, the, the nodes. And Rumi has a beautiful phrase where he says, reason is powerless in the expression of love. Reason is powerless in the expression of love which isn't that a beautiful way of talking about Neptune knocking at the door of these, of the nodes that, you know, the North node can get in Gemini can get very wordy and can have all the, all the facts and all the words. And, and uh, you could say the Sagittarius could get very vigilant and, you know, uh, determined to go in a certain direction. And Neptune is just like, shh, you know, Neptune, Neptune renders the nodes, uh, in this case, powerless in the expression of love. And I always love to think of a square as that knocking energy, like, are you gonna, I'd like to come in, I'd like to come in and sit with you in silence, I'd like to come in and meditate, I'd like to come in and soften your heart, I'd like to come in and let your whole front of your sur front surface of your body soften, so that you can be a conduit of love. Yeah. So I love that. And I also want to um, point out that perhaps many of us know that Uranus is squaring Saturn at this time, or I should say Saturn is squaring Uranus. And we just had the first of three hits that will happen throughout this year. This is enormously important because really the new is knocking, we all feel this, the new is, is really making itself known and Capricorn did its work to crumble some of the, the old patterns and old structures. Um, but what I think is happening now with Saturn squaring Uranus is that we are being asked to mature and we are being tested in the realm of our group work. Not only because Saturn's an Aquarius, but because it's also squaring Uranus, which has so much to do with group work. So this planet of maturation and testing is, is saying, okay, I'm glad that we're making progress, but we have to be consistent and committed and careful. And we have to perhaps really look at our group values and we have to you know, show up and do the work. If ever there was a time to show up and do the work in the in the forward momentum, the new, it's now. And we have three hits of that um, square. And yes, is it a is it a is there friction between the old and the new? Yes, there is. <laughs> is something dying and something being born? Yes, there is. Is there a new archetype that wants to come into play with with Uranus? Yes, there is. Um, and I would just say another piece about this, this, this uh, full moon is that Uranus is also beautifully in harmony with the moon. It's trying the moon and it's sextile the sun. So I don't want to overwhelm those that don't know astrology that well, but it's just like, let's just say there are new practices. You have an opportunity to start new practices at this time that connect you with the divine. And you have the opportunity to open the door to the new and to the reinvention of your life at this moment. And you have actually the opportunity to bring in some follow through, not to just be like, oh, that's just an interesting spark for the day, but to act, to bring in a practice. You know, the Virgo, Virgo part of the Virgo Pisces polarity loves a good practice, right? So I wanted to share that with you. And if there's anything else that anyone who is an astrologer out there sees that would like to comment on, please do. Um, but this is also an enormously important lineup. I just love it. Look at that Saturn conjunct Mercury conjunct Jupiter. So right in the middle is Mercury, the messenger. It's in Aquarius, which is the herald of the new age, the messenger of the new, disseminating the information, gathering to share what we need to hear. And on one side is Jupiter saying, yes. And on the other side is Saturn saying, you know, do this in the right way. Be deliberate, be careful and be clear. You know, share the, share the, good, the good word, share the good news in a clear way. 
Um, but that lineup is really auspicious for us right now. And it's a great time to be in a group like this that is looking to the new, yeah. So, um, so I wanted to, you know, presence that as we move into quest, you know, as we move into this, this ocean of, of love that is Pisces. And um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen right there. So the question that we have to return to again and again in any group that gathers to grow consciousness and love is, how can we, how can we be a greater conduit for this love individually and collectively? And, you know, on one hand, we could say, well, I've been asking that question for my entire life. This is all, you know, and guess what? That's what we get to do. We, we, we get to practice. That's, that's all we're doing when we're showing up in a group like this is we're practicing rendering ourselves available to a greater downpouring of love wisdom. And we are practicing feeling the sameness of each of us. <laughs> We're practicing our sameness. And the reality, as we all know, is that our world is in the greatest division it's been in perhaps, you know, since who knows, since World War II. I mean, it's, it's in a huge division. So how do we navigate that? How do we navigate that? And I shared in the, um, the invitation for the, we, the invitation that went out for this, for this offering, just four lines by Dina Metzger that I returned to again and again. And those four lines are these, there are those who want to set fire to the world we are in danger. There is time only to work slowly. There is no time not to love. And what I like about, you know, there's time only to work slowly. I think slowly is inviting us into attentively. I think slowly is inviting us into to work with presence, to not work with urgency and panic and uh, being behind and I'm not doing enough. No, to work with, to work slowly and patiently and attentively and with presence. And there is no time not to love. So yes, we every day, I'm sure we all have the friction ah, that comes up and like, you wanna, you know, something spurs you, right? But in those moments, if we can think of that phrase, really, there's no time. There's no time not to love. There's just, there's no time. <laughs> and even if we can think of that with a sort of sense of humor, like there's just not time for this. You know, we've got a lot on our plate. <laughs> you know, the first hundred days. No, I mean, really, we almost need to think of our, um, our own lives like the first hundred days of a new chapter. Um, there's no time not to love. So, you know, many of you probably know this quote from Discipleship in the New Age. Um, and it's one of the simplest ways that, that DK, you know, lays out the overarching vision for, for his work. And it, it's, it's simply these lines. We've heard them before, but we're gonna hear them again. The plan for humanity has three great goals the revelation of love, the illumination of the mind, and the evocation of the will, right? The revelation of love, the illumination of the mind, and the evocation of will. There it is. <laughs> Let light and love and power, there it is, right? But isn't that word revelation delicious? If you think about that word, it's not like, it's not like, uh, let's learn to love each other, or the plan for humanity is that we embody love. It's the revelation. And, and that word is so fascinating because I, I, I had to look it up, of course. And one of the definitions of revelation is a surprising and previously unknown fact, especially one made in a dramatic way. So isn't that fun to think? Like the fact of love the fact of what love actually is, is a surprisingly and previously unknown fact. I mean, 
we get love on a certain level, but when, if we really get love, guess what? That's a revelation, right? So I love, and, and, you know, and a revelation is like an aha, right? And, and, and humanity has got to have a mass aha. <laughs> yes, this is beautiful. What Sharon's saying, like when a veil is removed from a new work of art, the art is revealed. Beautiful. That's a great way of saying it. Um, another definition of revelation is the making known of something that was previously secret or unknown. Isn't that mysterious as well? That's the whole esoteric tradition. Like we are saying, we, we know something a little bit about love, I think, you know, like at least we've read, read it and want to understand it more deeply and we can start to reveal a little bit more about the, the, what love actually is. And the third definition is, and, and this is a, a good one too, supernatural disclosure to humans of something relating to human experience the revelation, like it's almost a, you know, it's, it's the metaphysics, you know, that is, that is shared with human experience, the supernatural disclosure. So I love this image that Sharon has given us of the veil and the, you know, we've all had those moments of the biggest kind of love or what love is. And, it, and you're wordless, of course and it is transcendent. And so a lot of times to start to have this revelation of love, we also have to understand, you know, what love is not, but also, yeah, I mean, what if you could never use the word love again? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to think, I'm gonna think in this chat and, I, what if you could never use the word love again? What is love? Like, what is the palpable experience of love? What are the components of love? If, how would you describe love? Just, just don't, don't think of perfection. Just, just start to put some words in there about what is love? In heart, um, in Agni Yoga's heart, they say how, he says, how necessary it is to learn to feel one's heart, not as one, one's own, but the universal one the universal heart, beautiful, embracing, oneness, all-inclusiveness. Yes, exactly, guys. Peace, expansion, compassion, deeply. Yeah. What else? If I could never say, I love you again, and I could just say, I what? <laughs> what would it be you know purpose yes yes electricity beautiful celeste yeah yeah it's alive isn't it i see you yes yes daniela i love you i see you deeply known you yes i hold you in deep ease and knowing that's beautiful i am you connection yes i am you i you Yes. Many of you know the story that my daughter Kate used to say, I, you, she forgot to, would say, forgot to say it, love. And I thought that's the most profound thing. <laughs> Energetic attraction, magnetic power, beautiful. Yes. I think there is something about the attraction and the, uh, yeah, the, the, these, we're using words like electricity and attraction and magnetism. I think that those are important words for love. Yeah. Like if you had, I mean, think about it. If you had to write a book about love, if, if DK sat, sat you down and said, your assignment for the next year is to write a book about love, you cannot use the word. What would you write? What would you write for 15 minutes? Yeah. Um, so keep, keep them coming. Keep them coming. I honor you, yeah. There'd be something about grace, yeah. I have a teacher, Sophia, who will always say there is a waterfall of grace that is forever falling upon you. And I think of, I, I would say there's a waterfall of love that is forever falling upon you. And yes, you can come out of the stream or you can be in the stream. You know, it's like we dip out in different ways, but the grace, the grace that's ever present, deep connection, Rosita, beautiful, yeah. 
attentiveness. There's something about that. Yes. Listening and attentive selflessness. Yeah. Union. Yeah, there's something, uh, we are definitely in these comments presencing deeply and fully the other, which is not really the other, of course, right? We are presencing ourselves in another form, <laughs> but um, yeah. A deep well of livingness, yeah. Limitless presence, deep compassion, deep compassion, yeah. I mean, think about again, that quote that I just read, how necessary it is to feel one's heart, not as one's own, but the universal one. Like that's a pretty profound practice. <laughs> we could write that book, yes, yes. To, to, to feel, to feel that when I, when I feel the beat of my heart, I feel the beat of your heart. Interbeing, yes. Yeah. So, you know, we could say also some things as we're generating these, we could say some things about certainly what love is not, or we could give a more, we could give a picture of an incomplete picture, right? It's, it's certainly not bound by family or lineage or race. It's not bound by anything. It's not finite, right? That that's so important that it's not finite. There's an infinite supply. There is a love that never ceases, never, never. Infinite, it's not romance, exactly. Uh, it can't be preserved. You can't hold on to love. You have to liberate it. You have to liberate it. You have to let it go. You can't clench, clench and say, I love you. You're mine, right? We know this, I'm stating the obvious, but still, sometimes when we say what it's not, we, we can feel what it is. And it's not exclusionary, it's not selective, it's not an emotion, it's not sentiment, it's not feeling, it's none of that, right? So what is it, right? Patient and kind, yes. Let me bring up a definition that we all also have seen a fair amount. Um, but you know what? We practice, we return to it again and again, don't we? And this is from Glamour, um, a world problem. Let's read this together. Love is not affectionate sentiment, sentiment or the possession of a loving disposition. These two later aspects are incidental and sequential. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have a loving disposition if you're in love, if you're standing in love, but, right? When the intuition is developed, both affection and the possession of a spirit of loving will necessarily in their pure form be demonstrated. But that which produces these is something much more deep and comprehensive. It is that synthetic, Listen to those words. It is that synthetic, that's a Pisces word, synthetic, inclusive grasp of the life and needs of all beings. I have chosen these two words with intent. Let's read that again. It is that synthetic, inclusive grasp of the life and needs of all beings. I've chosen these two words with intent. It negates all that builds barriers, makes criticism and produces separation. It sees no distinction, even when it appreciates need and it produces in one who loves as a soul, immediate identification with that which is loved. Immediate identification. I mean, I love, I love, defining something by saying what it is not, right? It, it's not anything that builds barriers. It's not anything that makes criticism. It's not anything that produces separation. It sees no distinction, even when it appreciates need and it produces in one who loves as a soul, immediate identification with that which is loved. 
you know, a bunch of you know that um, one of the exercises that Michael Robbins, my father, will always use is the same, same, same exercise, right? I love this so much where you look into a group and you, or you're sitting in an airport and you look around the airport and you just look at each person and you, th and you practice same, same, same. It's, it's, uh, it can be kind of disconcerting and mind blowing at the same time. <laughs> and he suggests starting with somebody that you really love. So you, I mean, that you really like that you have a personal love for that you're like, ah, same, yes, same. But then, you know, then you can practice on the tougher ones. Um, but don't leap to the tough ones because then you'll just give up. So just make it incremental, okay? <laughs> okay, so, Another, another definition that I really like for love is just the practice, and, and on that note is the practice of extending our identity into that of another. So that's another version of same, right? And we can basically, we can basically say that everything is related through unitive love or unitive wisdom. You, you, you used a lot of words around relationship here and, and connection. Everything is connected. Everything is related through love or wisdom. Darcy says, love is life itself. Beautiful. Yeah. Freedom. Freedom. That's key. That's the whole thing about there's no preservation. There's only this liberation that love helps us living in and as love is the deepest freedom. Um, Deepak Chopra says that love is a daring plunge into the experience of union. A daring plunge, yeah. Supre it's, it's the supreme irresistible energy, mana from heaven, the supreme irresistible energy. Because when you're in it, 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 there's no way you can, when, when love is that great, there's no way you can create obstruction to it. I mean, ultimately, when you're standing in the force of that kind of love, you, you, you can't defend yourself as it were, right? This is another, um, I found this, this is a little secret. This is a little secret because I found it in like old dad notebooks. <laughs> So, um, I don't know, but I, I think it's quite beautiful. So we're going to share this. Um, I thought, and I felt, is it not simply the irresistible will to give absolutely everything one has for the perfect joy of another soul? In fact, of all other souls, I thought the giving of love is itself the receiving of the supreme irresistible energy. Think about that. The giving of love is itself the receiving, it's like an infinity symbol, of the supreme irresistible energy. To me, hatred and all the negatives derived from it is extreme poverty. Love is wealth abundant. Love is life abundant. Why should humanity remain impoverished. Something there is which desires to give all until it knows itself to be the love it is. We are that something. We are that love. May we know it. I love, I love, wh why should humanity remain impoverished when all that we need to nourish is available, dancing everywhere <laughs> in us. We are it. Why should, you know, wh why should we not pour forth as water bearers the love and wisdom that, that humanity is so thirsty for? Love is wealth abundant. Love is life abundant. Darcy said that. Love is life. Love is life abundant. Yeah. <sighs> 
And I love this, you know, we know this, but if we really, we do have to think of this. The giving of love is itself the receiving of the supreme irresistible energy, right? The giving of love, you get it right back, right? All you need is love, yes. We need a music cue right now. <laughs> um, so, Let's 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 get a little bit into the uh, about you know it's all good all good to talk about all this love but clearly we're all crinkly beings that are wrestling with our crinkliness <laughs> or you know we all have obstruction to that flow for that's why we're here to work that out right and um, there's you know there's this beautiful idea that we're always always only doing one of two things, we're always only opening to love or we're always only closing down around it. So are you opening to love or are you closing? It's as simple as that. Are you available to love in this moment? Or, or are you feeling self-critical? Are you feeling judgmental? Are you feeling competitive? Are you feeling uh, self-pity? Or are you feeling exhausted? Are you open to love or are you closing down around it, right? You might, I mean, and honestly, you know, most of us get little glimpses of really truly being open to it. And then we have the little irritations that come in. And actually what I'd love for you to do just for a, 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 a couple moments um, is maybe even just, just, I'm gonna give you like two or three minutes or two minutes, just to, I'd love you to write down what and then and then we'll share it in the chat but maybe first write it on your notebook or something but write down what for you be specific be personal because some of those things you might not want to share right now and that's fine but what personally obstructs that flow right now because you know i remember talking about this talk with sarah with um sharon and sasha and you know in the 2025 initiative you're asking yourself what is true now what is true now you know, and so what is true now? What is preventing the flowing forth? What is preventing the expansion? What obstructs that flow? So just take just take a couple minutes right now and, and write it down and then and then maybe we'll share a few of them. But just feel into that. You might also think of this phrase, I will end the cycle of fill in the blank so I can stand in greater love. What will you end so that you can stand in greater love? Or what will you leave behind so that you can love more fully?
Beautiful. Let's, yeah, you're starting to share some of these. And so you can either share in the form of that phrase, you know, what will I end? What will I leave behind so that I can love more fully? So I'm going to, you know, Darcy says, love, fear. I will, you know, leave behind fear. Fear obstructs the flow of love, illusion of separation. Fear of, Joanna, fear of losing self or whatever we are holding on to. I will end the cycle of anxiety, fear, and worry so that I can fully love what is, to be in greater love. That's beautiful. And, you know, this idea of ending the cycle, it's very Plutonic. And Pluto is the esoteric ruler of Pisces. I will end the cycle. It's, it's summoning that Plutonic energy that, that we need with Pisces. I, you know, I will end the cycle of self-centeredness. Beautiful. I will end the cycle of the personality being reactive and not recognizing our oneness. I will end this on reality so that I may love more. I like that choice of words, Lynn, that this on reality. Alice, too connected to personalities, fear of losing ourselves. Yeah, that's an interesting thing that you're bringing up around if we're just in group consciousness, have we, will we lose ourself? I think that is, I think that's a tangible fear. Otherness, beautiful. Yep, yep, Alexandra, yep. Stream of limited self thoughts. Mm -hmm. Rosita, yes. I mean, we can just keep talking to ourselves. Not enough. You know, the, the Buddha has that beautiful phrase that I've been working with for many months now where he just says, enough is a feast, right? And I love that because we all have these cycles of not enoughness, not enoughness. You know, I'm not going to be enough if I show up here. I'm not going to love enough, whatever it is. Um, Daniela, I will end the cycle of asking for permission to love. Beautiful. Oh, to be in love. I will end the cycle of speed, the unceasing, unending movement. Sharon, that's very profound. It's like that, um, that sentence, uh, there, you know, we can only move slowly right now. Let's move slowly, but let's never not love. Daisha, I will end the cycle of impatience with what is. I can end the cycle by acceptance and loving more. Holly, patterns of response based on patterns of perception. Yes, that, that feels like something to go even, even more deeply into to un keep unpacking that. Betty, to create a dry space through the waters of chaos and fear in keeping with this full moon. You know, I love that you're saying that, Betty, because to me, the dry space is a bit of the Virgo, you know, the Virgo that's opposite it in a way, like to create the practices that, that, that are so grounded and so practical that we know will return us to the most profound connection again and again. Santana, yes, yeah, stuck in the limitations of the false self, too self-focused, must end the cycle to expand into the realization of the eternal love of the one universal self. Yes, beautiful. Moses parting the Red Sea. Yes. See, you know, when we name something, it reduces, it, 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 when we name something, it takes away some of its power or it gives it power, depending on what we want. You know, if we name it, it can start to let go. And if we name something that we want to grow in ourselves, of course it can grow. And the way I see it, you know, when we have these obstructions, we, eat, we have to do, I guess, one of two things. We have to outshine our closures like with the power of love, with the power of the heart. And one of the greatest images that I can give you is like that sun at the center of your chest where you cannot, it, the light grasps all, includes all. So it, it blazes through obstruction. You can outshine your closures. You can outshine your closures. And another way of thinking about it, I think is to look from afar, you know, look with distance, look with perspective. And of course, that's what the ageless wisdom does for us, right? It gives us perspective. It gives us the biggest picture. But this is, a, this is something that you could sit down and write for 15 minutes, you know, and you could just let yourself write, write yourself into an outshining. Betty says, synchronicity. Joanna picked up on the visual of Moses parting the Red Sea when I thought of what I said earlier. Ah, very good. Well, this is the group this is the group at work, right? 
This is when uh, when you're when we're thinking together, when we're loving together, when we're uh, searching together. Yeah. So that's that second approach to um, how we might deal with our own not enoughness or our own ways of separating or our own, um, yeah, I mean, what keeps us separate? Like that's another just excellent way. Cause remember the definition is like, there's no separation in love. So to ask yourself to write about what keeps me separate, what keeps me separate? Just to, to feel into that, that would be very important. Um, so let me read you um, with this idea of the perspective. Let me read you a little poem by Sezla Meloche. And um, he, it's called Love. And I think it has great instruction in it um, around another way to think about how we can let love win the day, you could say. Okay. Love means to learn to look at yourself the way one looks at distant things. For you are only one thing among many and whoever sees that way heals his heart without knowing it from various ills. A bird and a tree say to him, friend. Then he wants to use himself and things so that they stand in the glow of ripeness. It doesn't matter whether he knows what he serves. Who serves best doesn't always understand. And what I like about that last line is, you know, the definition of service in the Ageless Wisdom, it's really the spontaneous expression of the soul, right? So that idea of he who serves best doesn't always understand. And it doesn't matter whether you know what you serve, you are just in your truest service, right? So, uh, and, and I think that it's very instructive, those first couple lines, love means to look at yourself the way one looks at distant things for you are only one thing among many. And whoever sees that way heals his heart without knowing it from various ills a bird and a tree say to him, friend. So whenever you start to get, you know, in that place of uh, closure, we, we can zoom up, right? <laughs> we can zoom up. All right, my friends, I think it might be a good moment for us to go into our meditation and, and continue this contemplation in meditation. Then we can share a little bit more afterwards, um, unless there's anything that anyone else wants to place into the chat, any words that want to be said before that. So what I'd like to do in this meditation is um, let love be the keynote, okay? So please do what you need to do to get yourself in a good place, settled. And I think we're all muted. Okay. So just quiet the physical body and begin to steady the breath and pay attention to the breathing. And let's begin with three quiet inner ohms, three quiet ohms.
Let's begin by allowing the soul to work through and energize that center of love in your being. Let us recognize that our soul is one with all souls. That our heart is the universal heart. Let's invoke the energy of Jupiter, one of the rulers of Pisces to amplify the love nature. And let's invoke Neptune to dissolve the boundaries that prevent the fullness of love. presence that great compassion of Neptune dissolving all that prevents this great flow of love. Feel this group held by Neptune's embrace.
Let's invite Pluto as the great healer clearing obstruction. Let's invite Pluto to end what must end so we can move forward and toward and as light. Invite Pluto to do its work. these planetary allies, let's hold the beautiful esoteric phrase for Pisces for a moment. I leave my father's house and turning back, I save. What do these words mean for you now? What is the truth of these words now? How are you living these words now? I leave my father's house and turning back, I save. Let's allow this phrase to come alive in us. Love is life abundant. Let's work with this phrase. Love is life abundant.
How can you live this? Now let's allow that life abundant to pour forth. So let's begin by allowing that to, let's pour love to our immediate family circle. Ever increasing circles of love, pouring love to our immediate family circle. And now upon those with whom you associate in your everyday work and social life, the next ring of offering. Like a sun coming up over the horizon. Now let that molten lava love core stream forth to your group brothers and sisters. Upon the new group of world servers covering the entire planet And upon the world, that life abundant, coming from that soul, sun, self, And as you continue to allow that love to pour forth, presencing yourself in the center of that sun, I'm going to read you some words spoken by DK to one of his disciples and let each phrase be embodied and come to fruition within you. I tread the way of love. That love irradiates my life. The way of love is the lighted way. The 
way of love leads to the presence of the self, that self am I. I see that presence as myself. I merge into the light. I merge myself into the light. The sons of men must all be led to tread the way of love. And from that place of presence and light, let us together, standing in that light as one, sound the great invocation. From the point of light, within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Start to gently come back. And if there are questions or sharings that anyone would like to offer up, that would be a beautiful way for us to complete this time together. Um, any images or revelations <laughs> um, or discoveries. And you're also welcome if you would like to, um, instead of chat, you can also, we can also unmute you and um, you can speak. If 
anyone would like to share, please use the function, raise your hand. It's at the bottom of the uh, window. Lynn is saying again, the potency of group meditation. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Gail, life more abundant, expansion plus inclusivity plus consciousness. Yes, that's beautiful. I'm glad, okay, I'm glad that the planets were helpful. It's always so good to know as we're doing these full moon meditations, the planets that are our allies at, in this particular month. And yes, Jupiter and Neptune and Pluto are the great allies in Pisces. And isn't it beautiful again that we've, we happen to be meeting when Venus is in Pisces where it is exalted. So Venus is enormously important right now as well. Yeah. Maria Cristina is unmuted. Greetings, Kina. I just want to say thank you, love. Mm. That's all. <laughs> so good to see you and to hear your <laughs> so good. Thank you. I understand also the the silence of Pisces too. <laughs> the, there's a potency to that as well. But if there's anything that you want to name um, for your own, like to have it land in you, it's also a good a good moment to do that. And also to just keep breathing with the group. I have a feeling of so many things coming together in one globe. That's beautiful. Yes. It was amazing to uh, connect with the energy of Pluto that allows us to go to leave behind things that obstruct and limit. And it's very like amazing that the Pisces has been one of the triangle of the second ray is ruled by the, the planet of, of death, of endings. Because the, the love, as we were saying, like it's, uh, it's about connection and letting go all that separates. Mm. Yeah, I am with you on that. And I, I, I think it's such a profound contemplation to think about Pluto's place in Pisces because so often we relegate Pisces to a kind of softer quality or, you know, um, a, a, a peaceful place, but Pluto, Pisces also has knows how to end, says this is done, this is done. And that's, you know, we all need to be able to stop, <laughs> to end what, you know, what is the, the good that has outlived its time, right? So um, I'm glad you brought that into the space, Sasha. It's so important. Um, you know, and Pluto is a conduit of this first ray energy, yeah. Okay, Santana is saying, revelation. I leave the father's house and turning back is safe. The father's house is the one, the monad from which we come on the path of involution, on the path of evolution, the path of return. We have to save, serve, or enlighten others as we travel back to the father's home. Yeah, beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. That phrase always... I just think of that moment, you know, cause Pisces wants nothing but to have that, like that bliss of the oneness, the bliss of being in the father's house, you know, at last. And then there's that still that moment where we say, ah, but I, ha but I, I have to leave. I have to leave this so that I can 
be of my truest service. So I can carry, carry that piece out into the world, I suppose, as well. You okay? Good, yes. Yes. This feels like a really good way to, I, I love that Pluto's there as the ending because it feels, you know, we, there's so many times when we really <laughs> need something to end. And if we have this Pisces, you know, we're here in the Northern Hemisphere at the end of winter, an end of a long year, uh, the ending of a lot of Plutonian things, you know, and, and so it's to be able to say, stop, and now done, let it go, drop it, drop the need, drop the push, drop the drive, drop the fear, uh, um, and now done. And um, because I think, as you say, we, Pisces can be so much uh, felt like the compassion and the gentleness and the sensitivity in the ocean. We forget that the ocean can flood and drown and pound and break things as Texas has found out, you know, I mean, water can explode, you know. Um, so I'm really glad for that right now, because even in that silence, there, you know, in that silence and that stillness and that solitude, you and I were, were talking a bit before that it's just a lot. And it's as if there's now permission to drop mm -hmm. and end the cycle. Yeah, yeah be aware of it. Yeah, I love that. So important, Sharon. Yeah, and I mean, isn't it interesting that last year in 2020 with the pandemic, we had the exact conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto and we had the exact conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. So Pluto played in a huge role during this whole pandemic time. And, you know, now in this season of Pisces, maybe we have a sense that, an, you know, an end is somewhere in sight or at least a completion of this, this particular devastation. Um, it, it somehow feels like it's a different stage of Pluto somehow than what we were going through last year with this Saturn Pluto and Jupiter Pluto. And um, yeah. It's like the feeling like, you know, we've been saying, are we done yet? I mean, are we there yet? Is this done yet? Are, you know, are we done? No, we're not yet done. And it reminds me of, we were talking again before about being three feet from the gold. At where the story is where, you know, this happened in the Yukon and during the gold rush, miners would dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig, didn't find the gold and gave up and left. And they were literally three feet from the gold. So there's this, you know, are we done yet? I right. keep digging. Are we done yet? And then we keep, you know, and just to say, like, obviously we're seeing all kinds of things where the toxicity has to come to the surface. So we really know, what is what is the obstruction so that we can so that we can out, outshine it you know so like we are seeing the toxicity come to the surface and um and we which gives us a a, a view of what needs to be uh flooded with love <laughs> so um well thank you thank you all um i know that sasha wants to say a few um words to to and announcements, but I really am grateful for um, having this opportunity and thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, thank you, Heidi. It's uh, uh, always the journey that you take the group with you and it's breathtaking journey and uh, that and really appreciate it. And it's such a beautiful note at the end of the year and yeah it's ending that's the beginning before we go to the the, the closing uh, i just have one question to you is this uh with this end of the cycle and entering in the new cycle how you sense this what is the zeitgeist what is the, the, the note of the, of the time? What is this? What is true now? What is this year about? What you this year about? What we this year about? That's a huge and beautiful question. 
<laughs> and I think that I would return to something that I said earlier, which is I feel that for all of us at this deeply Aquarian time, that it's our, that every group that we have chosen to invest in is going to go through growing pains, um, but it also is going to have the greatest opportunity to flourish. And so I feel like the, we have to ride this momentum of the new because there is going to, it's like the last time we had the Jupiter Saturn conjunction in Aquarius, it was 600 years ago and we were in the bubonic plague and then we moved into the Renaissance. I mean, I have some hope that we start to get some glimmers and pieces. I mean, we've got a long way to go, but some pieces of the new that are life-giving. And I think we're gonna experience that in our groups. And so we have to be willing to stay the course and we have to be willing to double down and invest in our group work and not not go to the um, the lone wolfy pieces of Aquarius or the isolation of Aquarius that we've sort of been having to live in. We have to double down into the group work. Um, and, and I think we're going to have experience as a group that work that we've never had before as a result of this time of isolation. Um, so I, I'm always very hopeful, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> I always look to the, the year with great optimism about how we can learn to love one another. So that's my, my blessing for us. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll together, we'll live up to this challenge of Saturn Uranus square together as a group. I think that's beautiful calling for all of us. Thank you. And uh, today is the first day of the, the, the five days approach. And yeah, it's a good note for us to hold as we mm, work through many different groups, many different gatherings, but remembering our togetherness, this connection that's, that's the God is love. It's, so we together approach and we love to express it in the world. And as always at the end, few words of announcement I, uh, of our program for this full moon and for uh this coming um month i believe i'm showing my screen um, um okay so i wanted to make it more full screen but as you see uh, this is our program for this month this full moon, we have a one more uh, webinar. Uh, it's not, shouldn't say webinar, it's a meeting. It will be meditation. And that's uh, the meditation uh, that comes as a part of our meditation for the common good uh, monthly work. And this meditation will just come together. This meeting will come together to meditate on the topic of dissipating the fear of death, which is the focus of our Piscean cycle. And that's the topic of our coming new moon webinar. But on uh, February 28th, we'll come together to connect and invoke the, our understanding of this topic, that we would hold this topic for the next two weeks till the new moon, uh, where we will come together to meditate and radiate our understanding of that. So on the 28th of February, and we would invite those of you who are, would be inspired following that meditation to join the action area group preparing the new moon uh, focus new moon webinar and on march 2nd uta and her group uh, will uh, take us on continuous journey uh, awakening the soul of our nations so please join us on march 2nd and March 14th, as I mentioned, the Pisces uh, uh, New Moon, uh, Meditation for the Common Good. 
And on March 21st, we invite you, we as a 2025 initiative coordination group, we invite you to come to the garden, to our global group garden, where we will share our vision for this year and we will share about our program for this year and about the changes that coming in the format of all 2025 initiative webinars and all activities so that's our celebration new year celebration together so march 21st please join us and uh, just as a note technical note this month uh, many countries shifts to the daylight saving time we all do it in different times so let's just be cognizant about that that's uh, some of our uh, regular webinars will shift might shift for you in your time zone uh depending of uh, all those not synchronized daylight saving time shifts in different countries much love till we meet again friends <laughs>